it's Sunny and Finn's Wrestling and Video Game Podcast. This week we discuss Call of Duty Infinite Warfare and Titanfall 2, and we have a bit of a moan about this week's War and Smackdown. NXT was good though. What's up guys, welcome to episode 38 of the Sunny and Finn Show. I'm Sunny, and with me as always is Finn Steele. Hello. How are you? I'm good, thank you. Very good, how are you? I'm alright. You alright? Yeah. Not great, it's fine. Uh, I'm pretending to be alright so that I don't <laughs> sound like a broken record on this podcast every week by saying I'm ill. Oh yeah. But it's I am ill. Like oh dear. It's been like all year now. Yeah, it's not, not, a, not a good uh, couple of months for you, all the It has been a poor couple of months for me. <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah. Uh, this year sucks. I'm just ready for this year to be over now. Yeah, this year has been pretty tight. I'm gonna be, I'm gonna be fighting fit in 2017. <laughs> yeah, it's gonna be year, the year of Sunny. Y- yeah, yeah, <laughs> the year exactly that. Podcast, yeah. Yeah, yeah. It's gonna be great. It's gonna be awesome. We're gonna rule the world. Speaking of ruling the world, <laughs> yes. Um, today Donald Trump was uh, announced as the president of the United States of America. <laughs> announced, announced as the fifth member of the Five Six team. Right now. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, that's a thing to happen. Thoughts? Um, first thought: Please don't drag things to fire with you, America. Um, yeah, I just, uh, just uh, is my main thought. It just thought. seems baffling to me. Like, just, like when you read things about Donald Trump, it, I almost feel like it's um, a universal piss taking of this guy. <laughs> exactly. Like, and then, he's got crazy hair. Um, <laughs> he's like a, a wacky old man racist type. Right. <laughs> exactly, yeah. Just, I mean, if you're listening to this in America and you and we are wrong, like, please get in contact with us and, yeah. and you know tell us that we're wrong. I mean, we don't get political in the show, obviously. No. But and you know, who, who are we to judge who you vote for? We don't care. Yeah. Uh, it just it just seems weird to us as from non Americans. Yeah. Like everything we've seen about him has been just everyone taking the piss out of him, and yet he's now the president of the biggest country in the world. It's like what? what, what? what and that, that <laughs> what that's happened? what's like really really strange to me. It's yeah. like this guy is. Like, he does The Apprentice in America. Yeah. So it'd be like us having Alan Sugar as the Prime Minister. <laughs> yeah. God, I didn't even think of that. Uh, and, funny. like, fact. He's, he's super rich and probably, you know, he's never disclosed, like, how he's made his money. Professional. Professional. <laughs> <laughs> um, you know, so Science, I'm sure he's probably gone about it in some sort of shady way. Yeah, shady back Down the line. <laughs> used foreign workers or something. I don't know. <laughs> and, like, and now, he's, he's just... It's crazy to me. Yeah, craziness. This guy is a WWE Hall of Famer. <laughs> oh god, I even remember that. He's a oh god, Hall of Fame. This guy helped shave Vince McMahon's head at uh, WrestleMania. Jesus Christ. Um, I wonder if they'll mention it on War. Like the WWE Hall of Famer Donald Trump is now the president of America. I'll be very surprised. Yeah. Uh, because it's controversial. I mean, obviously not everybody. I mean, if anybody in WWE. As, apart from the McMahon family, would have voted for him. <laughs> yeah, probably not. It's obviously him and Vince McMahon are friends and whatever. Yeah. But, you know, not everyone's going to share, share the same political views <laughs> in, w, in the WWE locker room. Yeah, exactly. So it's, it's it just seems weird to me. Like, it's a, what is most baffling to me is how there isn't... I mean, if people hated um, Hillary Clinton... Donald Trump so much going into this election how was there not two better candidates <laughs> yeah right that's what I mean don't get yes, me wrong I mean yeah. we know nothing about American yeah, politics you know, nothing, nothing, nothing. Like, the most I know about American politics comes from me watching House of Cards <laughs> yeah uh, and I, I watch it and I pretend to know what's going on <laughs> and I watch it thinking I'm really smart and then when it's finished I'm like I don't know what the fuck is going on, but I love this. I love Kevin Spacey. He's awesome. Yeah. I like Kevin Spacey, yeah. Yeah, Kevin Spacey. <laughs> so, you know, yeah. we don't know anything. So, if you think we're talking nonsense, it's, you know, because we know nothing. Yeah, we are talking nonsense. But <laughs> you just, it, you have to look at it from an outsider's perspective here. Yeah. When you see this guy with his crazy hair in a terrible tan, <laughs> who was at WrestleMania a few years ago, yeah. shaving Vince McMahon's head, you sort of have to wonder what is going on in America. Yeah, what is going on? Who yeah. knows? Oh. Bizarre. Has it been a strange, strange year? It has been a strange year. It's, a strange it's been a strange year across the board. Like yeah. tons of celebrities have died. Yeah. Um, this has happened. Mm-hmm. Well, we're leaving the EU. Yep. And it's craziness. 
your Toy Odyssey video reached over 15,000 <laughs> views on YouTube. Yeah, it's like the strangest thing that happened in 2016. <laughs> yeah. yeah, 2016 has been so weird, yeah. and the Toy Odyssey thing is the weirdest thing to come out of it. Yeah, by far, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, let's talk games, shall we? <laughs> this is the Sunny and Finn Show. Yes. We are a weekly video game and wrestling podcast that posts every single Friday every across Friday. podcast services everywhere. Yes. What have you been playing this week, Finn? Um, I've been mostly playing yet more um, Tokyo Mirage Sessions. Trying to get through it, trying to finish it so I can move on to World of Final Fantasy and then get through that so I can get ready in time for Final Fantasy XV at the end of the month. Okay. Um, yeah, it's a long game, Jesus Christ. <laughs> I thought it was near the end, but it just keeps going and going. So I thought, right, I can see the final dungeon, but it's like, no, before you have to do that, you have to go to this other other dungeon and then you have to revisit these other dungeons you've already been to first and then you can go in there. It's like, all the stuff you have to do is side stories as well. So, no, just want to read it now. <laughs> it's a yeah. good game, great game, great story and everything. But you remember when we Jesus were Christ. kids, right? And you got a game and you wanted it to last forever. Yeah. I feel like now we're at the opposite end of that exactly. spectrum where um, you play games, but you've got more games to play, <laughs> and then you just want this game to end. Yeah, exactly. It's like I I have nothing against short games, like the order, order, what is called sixteen twenty whatever. The order eighteen eighty six. That's the one. Uh, don't get a bad rap for being short, but I would welcome games of that length. Yeah, honestly. That's, that's, that's why I love it's games totally like Gears of War because you know what you you know you're gonna get like an eight hour experience and you know that's it. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> it's not open ended. It's like just play through the fucking story and that's yeah, it. Yeah, that's it. It's done. Think we want something else. Great. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, that's been a lot of my playing this week. Because it's like VR stuff and Headmaster and played Sports Bar with you. Yeah, we love the Sports Bar. That's like I genuinely think it's one of my favorite VR games. Yeah, it's so cool. Just being in that space and just hanging out with a friend, just playing. Yeah, that, that's it. It's like. Being in a bar without being in a bar. Exactly, yeah. You have to deal with all the smelly people. Yeah. <laughs> all the drunkards and... Yeah, and you could throw bottles and crap around, not getting into any trouble. Yeah. <laughs> like, you know, yesterday we had, like, uh, table tennis pad- paddles, is that what they're called? I think so, yeah. And big, massive beach balls and a gun that shot ping pong balls. And it's like, <laughs> this is awesome. Yeah. And all of this while we were playing pool and darts. And it was like, this, this is ace. So cool. Just like a big playroom you just mess around with. But it feels real as well. Like, the pool... And when, you, when we play properly, obviously, we played like a quick game yesterday and it didn't really work as well. Yeah. No noises or anything like that. That's fine. That's fine. Um, well, when you play the actual game of pool, um, it, it just, it just, it works so well and it feels so realistic. Mm-hmm. Like with the, you know, the physics are perfect for it, I think. Yep. The sound effects are great. And it's, yeah. It just feels like you're there. <laughs> yeah. It's I'll, awesome. I'll start to explain to anyone who hasn't tried VR, but it's like it tricks your brain just thinking, you're, I'll yeah. there. It's clever. If you haven't sort of seen Sports Bar VR, you're a little bit skeptical. You can go. Uh, to youtube.com forward slash Sunny Finn Play and yeah. check out. Um, we've played it like three times on there, so yeah, you can go and check it out. It's cool. mainly us playing pool and us being bad at darts, <laughs> with the exception of the latest stream where we were mm. actually really good at darts. Yeah, and the match it. was over in like two minutes. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, I think they uh, patched it so it's easier to play now, so that's good. I think they've figured Props. the tracking out because, like, before you shake loads. <laughs> yeah, like, uh, yeah. But uh, yeah, it seems alright this time. There's some, tr- some tracking issues, but. They were fixed with me restarting the game. So, yeah. yeah. Cool, good stuff. Yeah. Um, I've been playing... Uh, I've been playing a lot of Skyrim Remastered. Nice. Good choice. And I know we've just talked about <clears throat> short games, and this definitely isn't one of them. <laughs> definitely not. But I absolutely love it. Yeah. Like, I, I wish I'd have t- put more time into it or took it seriously before. <laughs> Whereas before, I was just like an idiot and be like, I don't want to play this. <laughs> so I don't want to... See dragons and medieval stuff. You know, my guy. Like, no, this is, yeah, yeah. <laughs> this, yeah. That's what it was. This is for geeks. I'm gonna give, give me Call of Duty. <laughs> but now I'm like, I think I've played like 13 hours. Nice already. Cool. And uh, I love, I just love how open it is. And if it feels like you can play it however you want to play it. Yeah. And you, you know, you upgrade, and the upgrade paths are vast, and it just gives you like. Gives you the freedom to do whatever you want, but also the story's there whenever you want to go and do it. Exactly. Yeah, there's, there's, there's no wrong way to play Skyrim. You just play it however you want. Do what you want. If you want, don't want, to, if you want to ignore the story quest completely, you can just go off and explore. Mm. You can just do what you want. It's cool. It's awesome. But it's superb. And I love, um, I like the combat. It's, it is very sort of stiff. Yeah. And um, it suits it though. Yeah, but if it had some sort of weird refined combat system, I just don't think it'd be as good. Yeah, it definitely wouldn't be as in, as enjoyable. I don't think it has like some Devil May Cry style uh, combat. Yeah, it if it had good. the combat that Batman Arkham did, yeah, like, it just wouldn't be as it wouldn't be as satisfying to beat people. Yeah, exactly. And uh, I love killing like I killed a dragon 
like yesterday on my own for the first time because mm. in the first few times you have people with you. Oh yeah. Uh, but it, like yesterday I sort of um, killed a dragon by myself. I was so excited to get the dragon soul. Nice. And then this guy came along and stole it. What? <laughs> uh, his name begins Mirag, is it? Mirak? He's not the bad guy in the game. Huh. Ah. Might miss that bit. And he stole the dragon soul from me. Oh, interesting. So now I've got to find <laughs> another dragon to kill it to steal its soul to go and do this quest. All right, cool. So I love how open ended it is. Yeah, it's very cool. Just things, things, things going to happen around you. It's, uh... So I think maybe if I hadn't started that quest and then gone there and killed that dragon, this guy wouldn't have. I don't know. But it, yeah, either way, it. I think I just think it's really good. It's taken me out of my comfort zone, and I'm thoroughly enjoying being out of it. Cool, awesome. Um, I've been playing Titanfall. Okay. And I'm going to get to that in a minute. <laughs> okay. Okay. I'm going to moan. All right. We did talk about this briefly before the uh, yeah. podcast. <laughs> but it's coming full bore this time. All right. I'm going to be bad. And I've, uh, I've been playing Call of Duty Infinite Warfare. Nice. Um, How is it? It's it's Call of Duty in space. Right. right. It is... That's what you say, really. <laughs> yeah, it, it is. Um, you know, it's it's in a completely different setting. It's, you know, in it is in space. It's... It's, it's fucking Call of Duty in space. That's what it is. Yeah. Like, as soon as you, you know, hit the ground uh, in the campaign and start shooting things, it feels instantly like Call of Duty. Yeah. Um, which, you know, from a gunplay mechanic, there isn't any better first-person shooters than Call of Duty. Because it has... It does gunplay the best that a game can do gunplay. Yeah, that's fair to say. Yeah. Uh, they've just got it down. It, it doesn't. They don't need to change it. Yeah. Now, going back to Titanfall, there seems to be this sort of thing of Call of Duty versus Titanfall. Yeah, it is a minute. The futuristic shooters type thing. We take Battlefield out of the equation because Battlefield is, is World War One. is different and it's great and whatever. Yeah. Now, people fucking hate Call of Duty. They yeah. hate it. I think they're sick they of it. want that franchise to fade away. Yeah, I see that a lot. They got their way with Assassin's Creed. <laughs> like, there was Assassin's Creed, hey, oh, it's the same every year, and blah, blah, blah. And now, they've, now Assassin's Creed has gone away. Now, you know, they're starting to pile on the pressure on Call of Duty more and more. <laughs> yeah. I mean, Assassin's Creed is going to take, take a year off. It'll be back next year. But Call of Duty is never going to do that. Probably not. <laughs> and I don't think it needs to. As long as it's making money, it's always going to be there. But what I think people need to understand is... That Call of Duty is one of the is the biggest first person shooter franchise in the world. Yeah, but they are trying different things. Yeah. Now people may not like those different things. <laughs> people may not like the mech suits and the jumping up and down and all that sort of stuff. But you can't do World War One and World War Two all the time. Yeah. You just can't. You can't do it. True. Now. Going back to Titanfall, there's uh, a lot of talk and a lot of praise for the the campaign mode in Titanfall. There is. Now I've been playing the Titanfall campaign, uh -huh. and it is nowhere near the <laughs> worth the praise. Right. Okay. It's great. the the sh The shooting is fine. The the being the pilot and the, the war running and the shooting and all it's brilliant. It's really really good. Mm -hmm. Being in a Titan is fine. Yeah. But the like, I couldn't care less about this campaign. Like, I'm playing it. And there's like some dialogue choices. <laughs> yeah. Like, uh, we talk to BT, who was the robot. Okay. You, Titan, sorry. Yeah. And um, you can, there's like always two choices. Mm -hmm. You can either be a cocky prick uh, or you can, uh, you know, be serious with BT. <laughs> nice. Cocky prick all the way. But it's like, why is that choice there when it <laughs> doesn't matter? Yeah, it doesn't does not like influence like the story or like interactions with no. like that. No. Oh. And then Shame. you 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 fight bosses. So there's boss fights in this game in the mm -hmm. in the time for campaign. Cool. Let me to boss and, fights. Yeah, so do I. But like they, the the scope of this universe is so big that you could introduce these characters and you can build around them. Mm. Time for doesn't do that. It oh. gives you these <laughs> characters and they talk for a bit on the comms and you think, okay, this could be pretty cool. Then they turn up and they're tired and you kill them and that's it, they're gone. Oh. It's like... Well, <laughs> thanks well, for coming. So what's the point of this? Yeah. It, and it, it's annoying because, and I genuinely believe this, 
I think people are heaping praise on Titanfall 2 so that people will um, buy it over Call of Duty. Um, yeah, that would surprise me. Um, I think people just don't want Titanfall to disappear. I think they want them to, to be more Titanfall games because like, apparently Titanfall 2 isn't selling that well no. and uh, they've been like, projected to sell really badly. Um, it's partly EA, EA's fault for releasing it at the time they did. Um, don't move. Uh, it's but, not partly, it's 100% Oh yeah, 100% EA's fault for releasing it at that point. Releasing yeah. it at that point. Don't mind, don't mind EA. Um, I don't know, I think I think people want Titanfall to succeed more than it's going to. So people are just like, planning on the praise saying, oh, you need to play it, everyone should play it, buy it. You need to make more. But but it's it's false. Mm. Right. Well, no, but it's, just, it's like opinions, man. <laughs> it's it is some... opinions, but... Like, I've seen some reviews for the Call of Duty campaign and they're like, oh, it's, you know, it's it's Call of Duty, it's... It's, it's it's really depressing. It's downbeat. It's dull and all this sort of stuff. And it's yeah. like, I defy <laughs> anybody, right? And I, I, it's just not me. Obviously, it's my opinion uh, as well. But I defy anybody to play both campaign modes and then come out of it telling me that time falls better because it isn't. Challenge accepted. I'll try and do my best. Yeah. <laughs> I'll do that and uh, we'll pull back. But uh... I just I just think there's some sort of thing against Call of Duty where people want to. I, I understand. People want Titanfall to succeed. I'm one of them. Yeah. And uh, I might come across here like I hate Titanfall, but I don't. I, th- I think it's brilliant. Oh, yeah. It's a good game. Um, I think the multiplayer is great, um, but that's another thing that's upset me. Oh, the trophies, yeah. There's three trophies for multiplayer, that's it. <laughs> yeah. It's all the first game was a multiplayer game, and that was it, and the whole game was full of tro- like multiplayer trophies. Yeah. Yeah, it's a campaign reason, but, um... that you know, will last you 10 hours maybe on the hardest difficulty, five on the... On easy. You know, on, you know, easy or normal. Yeah. I don't know, man. I just think... That's a bit weird. I agree with that. The praise that it, it's not 9 out of 10. No? It's 7. 7 out of 10. Hmm. It's 7 out of 10. Okay. It's not the 9s that it's been getting. No way. I'll give it a play. I'll give it a play and report back and uh, let you know what I think. And But think, and, but Call of Duty, it's around, it's around every year. Maybe I'll review it. And you're going to get it every year. True. Regardless. Mm-hmm. Uh, I don't think the bubble's bursting. This year has sold less. Yeah, but... We have to factor in here <laughs> is no Xbox 360, mm-hmm. no PS3. True. And uh, even though it's selling less, that is still a crap ton of copies. <laughs> yeah, but, yeah. A ridiculous amount of copies sold, so it ain't going anywhere yet. No. Sorry, internet. And it's... The, the people who hate it, it's like it's like an internet craze thing. Yeah, pretty much. Like, oh, let's, let's pile... Let's, oh, yeah, we hate Call of Duty. It's crap. It's, it's corporations. Blah, 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 and all this sort of stuff. It's like... But have you played the game? It's not. It's not. It's that bad, still actually. Call of Duty. It's yeah. just Call of Duty in space. Yeah. Like Battlefield has tried different things, and no it one has. gave a fuck about it. <laughs> Battlefield Hardline was cops and robbers. Yeah. No one cared about it. Yeah, kind of garbage. Battlefield Four wasn't that well received. No. And kind of a mess. So, and EA did not want to make Battlefield One. Not the way it is. <laughs> yeah, but you say they it, didn't it, want it to be World War Two yeah. or World War One. Yeah. My apologies. Um. But now it's there. I'm sure they're, you know, they're over the moon with it. It's sold well and it looks great and plays great and all that sort of stuff. Yeah. But they had to go back to World War One for it to be successful again. Mm-hmm. Call of Duty don't look like they're going to do that. They're not going to give in. Yeah. Not yet. Maybe once they've seen the success with Battlefield, they might go back to World War One. It's actually done before. It's only World War Two. So that would be a new direction. Um, but I don't know if that style of game would work in World War One because it's very fast paced and actually and shooty, which. Yeah. Yeah, so I don't know. But Maybe. The thing is, you can't... I get, but Call of Duty, the first one, was what, World War II? Uh, yeah, or World War Two up until 4, and then it was like mm-hmm. modern. Yeah, but then, then 5 was World at War, so they went back to it then. It's true. And World at War's a really good campaign. Yeah. Crap multiplayer, great, yeah. Can- <laughs> great campaign. But, you know, you can't you can't do that constantly. No. But you, you have to move forward, so it's still the great Call of Duty gameplay. Mm-hmm. And the great Call of Duty multiplayer and a lot of effort goes into the campaign and the set pieces and all this sort of stuff. But you, you have to you have to move forward. Yeah. You have to push the bar and try different things. True. Oh, but it's not realistic. It's not, you know, all this sort of stuff. It's like... Who cares? <laughs> yeah. It's, it's Star a video Wars game. isn't realistic. Yeah, it's a video game. Who cares? It needs to be realistic. Yeah. As, as long as fun. you've got that great core gameplay 
Because Titan Ball is super realistic with his giant robots. <laughs> it's, it's just it's just baffling to me the hatred towards Call of Duty. Yeah. I don't know if it's because it just sells a ton every year or whether it's something that appeals very largely to uh, casual, casual gamers. gamers. Yeah, probably. It's like that thing of the Wii. Oh, filthy casuals playing my video games. It's like, who cares? Just let them play. Have another fun. The more people play games, the better it is. I said the same last week, but the more people who play games, the better it is for the gaming industry as a whole. Yeah, I mean... So, sh- shut up, internet. And I know it sounds like I'm moaning for moaning's sake, but <coughs> the, there has to be a point here where people are realistic and really understand that Call of Duty is a great game. Yeah. And it's great, and it's consistently great. Yeah. You don't get any Call of Duties that are like... Like a four out of ten. Yeah. There's never, there's never a bad Call of Duty. Yeah. I mean, no matter go- what your opinion is of it. Yeah. I mean, some people didn't like Ghosts so much, but it still wasn't a bad game. It's like like a seven. No, that's <laughs> it. It's like it's fine. Yeah. Yeah. Ghosts it's still a Call isn't game. the best Call of Duty. Yeah. But it's not a bad game. Yeah, exactly. It's like that's like my opinion on Final Fantasy Thirteen, which everybody hates. It's like Final Fantasy Thirteen isn't the best Final Fantasy. Yeah, but it's fine. It's a good game. <laughs> so like, if you don't like if you don't like first person shooters and you don't like card, fine. Yeah. But it's again, it comes back to that, at least play it first. <laughs> yeah, exactly. You know? <laughs> it's, it's, it's no one's forcing you to play it. If you don't want to play it, don't play it. Yeah, but... Just let everyone else play it. But it's like, it's like we talked about with VR last week. Yeah, exactly. Like, people are p- piling hate on VR because they haven't got it. Yeah. just Or haven't tried it. Yeah. It's like, people hate COD because it's a popular thing to do. And they want Titanfall to succeed so that COD fails. <laughs> Newsflash, guys. I think it happened. COD isn't going to fail. No. Still play Titanfall, but just don't go into it expecting the 9 out of 10s that it's been getting in the reviews because it's fair. it isn't that. Okay. I'll take it over. I need to play it. I will do. Do play it. I'll lend you my copy when I've done it. When cool. I've finished the campaign, uh, which is annoying me. But <laughs> yeah. Uh, Call of Duty is great. Titanfall is great. Play everything. Yes. But just don't get sucked into this <laughs> don't don't hate don't hate on stuff for the sake yeah. of it for the yeah. sake of it yeah it annoys me so much <laughs> it's been bought like I saw a picture on Twitter someone put um, like I think I don't know when it was but there was more people playing farming simulator online than there was Call of Duty oh yeah I don't know when this data <laughs> was taken yeah but but PC. it's like come on like yeah. and this person was like oh I'm laughing so hard it's like it's probably on, on, probably on PC and it's like Call of Duty isn't as popular on PC as it is on consoles. It's like Farm Simulator is weirdly successful for some reason, yeah. which I don't understand. But okay. but it's things like people, that from people who <laughs> there's, there's like no motivation behind it. Yeah, it's like whatever. People like Farm Simulator, yes, it's cool. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. I don't like Farming Simulator. And who the hell's playing it? Yeah, but yeah, it's not, not, it is what it is. You can't yeah. hate people for playing it. No, exactly. So. <sighs> people are weird. Fucking internet, man. <laughs> I know. <laughs> Depressing. Um, but that's all I've been playing. I've been playing Skyrim, <laughs> Call of Duty, and Titanfall. Cool. Good good selection of games there. Yeah, good selection of games. Nice, nice varied selection of games. Yeah. Um, there isn't really much in the way of gaming news this week. No huge amount. Um, oh, wait. I've been playing Job Simulator as well, which I love, oh, yeah. by the way. Awesome. Uh, on PlayStation VR. I love it. Like, I, think, I think it's so funny. It looks so good. I'm it's so it. well written. Yeah. And he's got that. From a just from a comedy standpoint, it's so funny. Yeah, awesome. Um, but yeah, news-wise, um, I saw that the Mass Effect trilogy is now on EA Access and yeah. backwards compatible with Xbox One. So that's cool. Yeah, the, uh, Mass Effect One's been backwards compatible for a while. Oh, right, okay. They just made two and three backwards compatible. Sweet. But then at the same time, they've made them all available for EA Access, which is awesome. So it's such a good deal. Yeah. We we praise that service all the time. <laughs> yeah. But it is so good. Bring it to PS4, please. It's never going to happen. Please, I want it. And then uh, also they've put Mirror's Edge 1 and Mirror's Edge Catalyst is now on there as well. That's so good. <laughs> That's awesome. It's like, like if you go into, if you wandered into CEX now, Mirror's <laughs> Edge Catalyst is still cost you £25. Yeah, probably. Yeah, you're kidding it right now. Except for the weird release time of 24 2 but other than that, yeah, I mean, they're doing good. <laughs> I mean, you could probably, I still think you could mow through the whole of the Battlefield 1 campaign. You probably could, yeah. 10 hour trial that you get. Probably. Uh, Which is what I'm going to do. Yeah, go for it. Even though I'm stuck already. First okay. level. Oh yeah, yeah. Send that It's fine. No, no, no. <laughs> <laughs> That's a good point, actually. I could do that. Yeah, yeah. Didn't even That's... think about it. Yeah, um, I'm gonna do that. Sweet. But yeah, EA Access is so good. Yeah. Okay. Good. Just so if, you have, if you have an Xbox One and don't have EA Access, you probably should. Yeah, it's like sort of one of the best reasons to get an Xbox. <laughs> Pretty much. Yeah. 
We talk about this all the time, but it, it, it's, it's true. It doesn't, doesn't make it any less true. It doesn't yeah. matter we talk about it. All right. Um, the wrestling was terrible this week. Yeah, it wasn't great, was it? So, Raw and SmackDown were both filmed in Glasgow. Yeah, they were. In the, uh, in one, in the same arena. So, the, uh, the SSE Hydro, is that what it's called? Uh, yeah, that's the one. Um, did you notice that, you know, I don't know if it was like a, the arena's weirdly set up. But yeah, it looks like a big blue light on like one corner like, next to the stage. I didn't actually know. Huh. But did, did it look different to you this week? Uh, it did. I think it's because it's a smaller arena. They might have been using like the, the WWE live set rather than the not regular wall set. Oh, okay. So, yeah, I think that, that was why, but maybe. Oh, okay. But yeah, I mean, it was, yeah, it was really crap show, wasn't it? It was War. really crap. Yeah. Before we go into, uh, before we sort of pick out any sort of highlights that were on. <laughs> Very few. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, let's talk about our our favourite WWE superstar. Okay, yeah. <laughs> um, what he's been up to. Sweet. Can't wait. So if you listen <laughs> to our show and you listen to us every week, or you know, at least you listen to us regular, yeah. and follow our social media channels and stuff like that, uh, you'll know that Sin Cara is one of our one of our favourites. He's the man. For the wrong reasons. <laughs> yeah. He's the ultimate fighter. He, uh, he, li- he likes a scrap. He does. <laughs> he likes to get into uh, a round of fisticuffs <laughs> backstage with his colleagues. Yes. Um, so before this week, he was uh, 4-0 mm-hmm. in backstage fights. What a guy. What a guy. His last victim was uh, Simon Gotch of the Vaud Villains. <laughs> yeah. So apparently this week, um, they're on their way to, to Glasgow. And apparently Sin Cara has been a real annoying prick on the bus. <laughs> yeah. Like apparently he's like making noises and I don't, know what, I don't know what goes through this guy's head. Yeah, a bit weird. He's clearly just a nutcase. <laughs> uh, so he's making loads of noises on the back of the bus. Like a, like a child. Like, a, like the naughty kid on the back of the bus. <laughs> yeah. And apparently like, everyone's getting really annoyed with him. And Jericho eventually sort of stood up to him and was like, hey, come on, shut up. Yeah. I, I don't know if they were the words that we used. Yeah. Apparently the words that Sin Cara used <laughs> were fuck off. <laughs> <laughs> Good choice of words there. Go Good choice of words. Yeah. Um, bit of back and forth, apparently. Then uh, Sin Cara hit Jericho. Right. And Jericho bit him. <laughs> oh, yeah. Bit his finger, I heard. Yeah. Bit his finger. Yeah. And then the fight was broken up. Yeah. Go on, Sin Cara. <sighs> you did it. <laughs> of all the people to attack, not Chris Jericho. Come on. I'm I'm chalking this one up as a win for Sin Cara. I think it is. He, got he simply him. didn't go for a girly bite. He punched him. <laughs> he did punch him, yeah. Uh it's just weird. So what? What? You're not helping yourself here, Sin Cara. You're already lost in the cruiserweight division, not really doing much. Yeah, looking overweight. Looking way overweight. Way over two hundred five. <laughs> way over two hundred five. Uh, three hundred five. <laughs> yeah, three hundred five. <laughs> three hundred five live, Sin Cara. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but yeah, weird, weird, weird man. What are you doing? Yeah, and still, apparently, still I don't know if you saw this as well. Apparently, they're going to sort of send him to anger management classes. Really? <laughs> because this is like a reoccurring problem. Yeah, well, that's from Randy Orton, so I don't know. Yeah, I, I'm not convinced that there's enough stock held in Sin Cara for, to go through all of this trouble. Yeah, I wouldn't be surprised if he just quietly disappears in the next few months. Yeah, I it's mean, a shame. He, he had a terrible outing on Raw this week. He looked <laughs> sluggish. He did. I don't know if he was knackered or he was too, he didn't too even... bummed down from reading all the stuff on <laughs> Twitter about him. Yeah, he was also anyone in the match who didn't get an entrance. He was just kind of there already. Ah, yeah. Yeah, not great. Mm, so... Uh, if you need a problem sorting out, you know where to go. Yeah. Sin Cara. <laughs> Sin Cara's your man. And if, like, there must be some sort of weird thing in WWE where everyone wants a piece of Sin Cara. <laughs> yeah. Like, right, I'm, it's, it's my turn. Like, it's, it's been a couple of months since Sin Cara's been in trouble. Like, I'm gonna, let's try our luck. Let's see if, uh, let's, let's see if we can catch him off guard and beat him. <laughs> yeah, seriously. Ugh. I think even the biggest would su- struggle. I think Braun Strowman would have a job, yeah. Yeah, I, I think he'd, I think he'd really struggle. Yeah, probably. Maybe Sin Cara grew up on the mean streets of Mexico. Maybe he did. I mean, that was his kind of his gimmick at the time, wasn't it? When it didn't have, like, lost oh, the mask with Unico, yeah. Yeah, uh, that stereotypical Mexican drug dealer gimmick. Though, <laughs> exactly. Unico. Yeah. Who was that guy you had with him? Uh, Cam- Camacho. Camacho. Oh, Camacho. Yeah. Yeah, that was him. He was in NXT for a little while, and then he just kind of vanished. Oh yeah. Yeah. I wonder what happened to Camacho. I don't know. He's kind of sucked. Camacho, <laughs> Camacho, 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 Camacho man. Very <laughs> <Yeah, yeah>, good. <laughs> I like to, I like to bring back uh, Sin Cara's bike. 
and he had a little bike and he's like oh yeah he had like a, a chopper didn't he yeah yeah like with a with a, like a, a do-rag <laughs> yeah exactly a bandana hanging off uh, the handlebars <laughs> just the most stereotypical thing you can imagine do you remember when they had Super Crazy and Hooventude and a few others <laughs> and they like came out on a lawnmower I don't remember that no yeah they came out like <laughs> it sounds fucking so racist now when you think about it <laughs> yeah but like, like I don't know, do Mexicans cook guns in America or something? I don't know. I, don't know. Hmm. I guess um, so. I guess so, yeah, yeah. I guess typically they're like the the help. Yeah. Yeah. Like, um, like, we don't think that, just that, just, just no, to clarify. Kind of like Matt Hardy's uh, gardener, what was he? What's he called? What's his name? Well, his actual father-in-law. Is that his actual father-in-law? Yeah. Oh. It's her, it's, I think it's Rebby Hardy's dad. Oh, right, okay. I, I think. Senior Benjamin. Yeah, that's the one, Senior Benjamin. I think that's his father-in-law in real life. All right, okay. But yeah, it's the same thing, because he yeah, was labelled totally. as the help, wasn't he? Yeah, exactly. But yeah, Hooventude, I think it was Hooventude, Super Crazy, and someone else, anyway. Yeah. And they, um, like, they, yeah, they came out on like a, a green lawnmower, <laughs> like, a, you know, one of them sit-on ones. Yeah. It's like, can you, you'd never get away with this now. Never. But this was only a few years ago when like Super Crazy and that were on Smackdown. Yeah. Craziness. Super craziness. <laughs> Super craziness. Yeah. <laughs> uh. Okay, so um, against our will, we're going to talk about Raw this week. Yeah. And it was poor. I didn't even watch it all. It was so bad. Yeah, I said a lot. Uh, unsurprisingly, Seth Rollins is the fifth member of Team Raw. Shocking. What was he going to do otherwise? <laughs> exactly, yeah. Like, if he wasn't going to be the fifth member, what was he going to do? Uh, watch just, Survivor Series. Yeah, just be in the crowd watching. Yeah. Looking sad. <laughs> <laughs> a single tear in his face. Yeah. Oh. <laughs> yeah, it'd be, like, it'd be like a, a crying Seth Rollins meme <laughs> instead of a <laughs> yeah. crying Michael Jordan meme. Exactly, yeah. 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 Uh, so that happened. Then we had a bizarre cruiserweight tag team. Uh, this is so dumb. Um, so it was Sin Cara and like the super over, or well, at least for me, at least, which <laughs> yeah. one? For first, first for, actual wrestling fans. Yeah, <laughs> for, for wrestling fans who enjoy wrestling, yeah, not just go to sit and talk to each other. Yeah. Like Rich Swan, um, he teamed up with the Ultimate Fighter Sin Cara, who mm-hmm. didn't get an entrance, nope. as previously pointed out, mm-hmm. and uh, they took on. The heel, WWE Cruiserweight Champion Brian Kendrick, uh-huh. and his tag team partner was Scotland's own, uh-huh. heavily a face, yeah, the debuting like Noam Dar. Yeah, fireworks and everything. Right. Yeah, exactly. Pyro <laughs> and the, everything. Yeah, huge bop. People freaking love Noam Dar in yeah, Scotland. But he's Scottish. He's... It's Noam Dar, right? Yes. Yeah. He's awesome. Yes, he's great. What would WWE thinking... <laughs> Putting him on the heel team uh, with the heel champion. And it's so... What? what uh, it's baffling. That's what it is. Right. And then they lost. <laughs> they lost, like, yeah. Brian Kendrick lost the match. Like, he, lost, he, he he took the pinfall. Rich Swan pinned him. I mean, I get one is about Rich Swan over because I think they're building a few between him and Brian Kendrick. Yeah, and fine. And I, I'm, I'm fine. fine with that. Yeah, me too. But just have them in separate matches. Have Rich Swan versus Brian Kendrick. If you've got a tag match, have a tag match, just find someone else. And have a separate match with Noam Dar as a face, going over whoever, and being a big hometown moment. Happy moment for yeah. Scotland. If you have to have a, a tag team match, or a heel team versus a face team, fine, you have Sin Cara and Rich Swan. But you've got Drew Gulak, you've got Tony Nese. Exactly. Got, <laughs> All these people <laughs> just, you're not using. Any, just one of them. Yeah. You had like five matches on this whole three hours of war. You could have had to squeeze in one more, surely. <laughs> Let's cut down some crappy talking segment. Oh. And there was a lot of it. There's a lot of it. Um, he did get a moment after the match. Uh, Kendrick's blaming him for the loss. He's like, yeah. oh, it's your fault. And then he, like, I've known Dar beat him up. And now it's a good, now it's a nice moment. Yeah, I've, that, I've, I, and that is fine. Yeah, I'd be for Noam Dar to have at least that. And it's good to see him on war. Good, I'm glad he got a good reaction. It's just, what a dumb way to do it. <laughs> Such a stupid way of doing it. Like, There's so many better ways to do it. You could have done it. But if you book that whole match just to have that at the end. Yeah. But like, Noam Dar would have been cheered regardless of who he'd have fought. He could have had a one-on-one match with Tony Nese or Drew Gulak or anyone. Yeah. Could have fought Sin Cara, could have fought Cedric Alexander, could have fought anyone and he would have been the face. Exactly. It's like... Except the face team won and they got booed. Yeah. Exactly. But they booed Rich Swan. He's like... The exactly. Most over guy in the... <laughs> uh. They booed Rich Swan from the face team because so he dumb. pinned the heel champion <laughs> because the face that was on the heel team lost. Uh, bizarre. Are you kidding me? <laughs> what what is, is, who what sat is, backstage uh, and gone, right, uh, yeah, we're going to have a tag team match tonight and uh, um, who, who can be on the heel team? Uh, uh, this guy, he's from Scotland. Uh, <laughs> he hasn't been on Roy yet, but probably let's put him on the heel team because they'll probably, 
you know, they'll probably want to bury him or something. I don't know. Yeah, it's so bizarre. Don't want to have him lose. It's like they, yeah. It's like they've given up on a cruise before team started. It's done. But there might be some redemption for the cruise away, so we'll talk Hopefully. about this yes. very shortly. But but the match itself was like two minutes long as well. They didn't even get a chance to <laughs> chant for Noam Dar. It's like like a couple of chants and then it was over. Was like, oh. Yeah, well, Rich one did his uh, the Hurricane Rana thing that he he's leaping Hurricane Rana and the uh, like the forward roll into the Frog Splash, which they're calling Rolling Thunder. Mm, kind of not really though. But it's not the Rolling it's Thunder. It's not because <laughs> the Rolling Thunder was a, a forward roll and then a somersault. Yeah. This is a forward roll and a Frog Splash. Yeah. So you think a of weird. a better name. Yeah, exactly. The, the booking of the Cruiserweights on Raw has been bizarre, so bizarre so far anyway. But this took it to a new level. Yep. It's dumb. Weird. Dummy dumb dumb. Uh, what else do we have on Raw? We had a terrible uh, talking segment where the New Day were dressed as Braveheart. Oh yeah, that was a bit weird. Uh, it was rubbish. And I couldn't stand the quote unquote comedy any longer, so I had to skip it. Yeah, <laughs> fair play. Uh, yeah, so that was that. Shining Stars, great. Uh, uh, new, oh, new day out of match with Gallows and Anderson. Uh, Gallows and Anderson won. Good result. Match was super weird though. Um, new, uh, Gallows and Anderson kind of got the last hand to, to the most of the match and then came up right at the end to win. Uh, Can you now see why I didn't? Talk yeah, about he skipped it. it. Yeah, it's weird. Dumb. Um, Sami Zayn fought Rusev and the winner would fight Dolph Ziggler at Survivor Series for the IC title. Yep. Sami won. Good. And I fully expect him to beat Dolph Ziggler for the title as well. Bring the IC title to Raw, and I think that will bring Ziggler with it because of something that happened on SmackDown. Yeah. They're making sure. it obvious. Yeah, I think so. Um, the women's Survivor Series Matt team for Raw has been decided. Mm-hmm. Um, they're all smiling on the picture as well, which is weird to me. Nia Jax is a heel. She's smiling like uh, she's just so happy to be there. <laughs> weird. Um, Charlotte, uh-huh. Bailey, Sasha Good. Banks, Good. Dana Brooke, Good. Yeah. and Alicia Fox. Uh, weird. <coughs> uh, was it Danny Brooks not going to be in the match is there a teasing is going to be Danny Brooks and then actually no it's Sasha Banks um, I mean, he's going to be like the enforcer or something there I don't know he's going to be there in some capacity oh wait actually you're right because Natalia's on the other side and she's yeah maybe just have six on six what's the big deal yeah I know oh, whatever <clears throat> stupid so, stupid yeah and that's basically all that happened on Raw uh, yeah pretty much um, main event was pretty cool at least uh, Seth versus Roman versus Owens versus Turkey versus Braun Strowman uh, good to see Braun in an actual like main event match. Uh, was in good spots. And uh, Braun went through a table at one point uh, where he was laying on the table and got power bombed by Seth. No wait, Seth power bombed Chris Jericho through Braun through a table. That was it. <laughs> uh, and yeah, it was a cool match. I thought it was okay. And uh, yeah, so Seth. Wait, hold on. Oh yeah, he paid- <laughs> I thought it makes it into my notes here. Uh, he pedigree Owens. Uh, Jericho broke with the pin. Then to pedigree on Jericho, <coughs> and then super kick just from Seth to Jericho. Superman punched Kevin Owens and uh, Kevin Owens fell on Jericho for the three count and won. It was all quite funny. Right? Yeah. <laughs> but all in all, if you were to give um, Raw a... Um, a te- <clears throat> Jesus Christ. <laughs> <laughs> a school test paper grade, what would you give it? Uh, what's the one above an F? Like a D, I guess? E, obviously. Oh, yeah. I guess. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. I don't know if like... those letters. <laughs> <laughs> That's the hard. But it works different. I think like the American one, there's like A, B, C, F or something like that. Oh, is that how it works in America? I think so. Something like that. Something weird. Um, okay, yeah. well, let's, let's, because we're English, let's go with that. <laughs> yeah, I'll get, I'll get like a D minus. D minus. That's yeah. fair. Uh, that is fair. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Okay, let's move on to SmackDown. Uh, uh, four men on commentary. What the fuck? I know. What the hell? <laughs> what was that? But I didn't hear Tom Phillips for most of it. Yeah, I think it's just kind of like they're in between matches but not during matches I don't know hopefully he's replacing JBL I hope so he was wearing a kilt by the way which I could really oh, do without yeah is he Scottish has he got Scottish roots or something I don't know I don't know I don't care who cares <laughs> right, this is how annoying you can, you can hear we, like, we the sound of our voices how little uh, we care about the wrestling this week we do okay yeah it's so dumb yeah we've given um, up Brizango are the last tag team in the 20 man tag team Matches Survivor Series, they beat the Vaude Villains. I like the Brizango, but I feel bad for uh, the Vaude Villains. Um, what the hell is this yeah. fashion police crap? Oh, it's a thing they were doing on WWE.com. It's a thing. Look it up. <laughs> it's, it's, I don't want to. I have to be honest, I don't want to. Yeah, it's it's. I mean, it's kind of funny. I mean, the two funny people <laughs> being put into like, I don't know. They're trying to force something, I don't know. It's weird. The crowd mo- were more interested in Fandangoing. They were, I yeah. Found. Yeah. Weird. God Almighty! You just—I see these things happening, and my mind is just—it's <laughs> just—I it's, it's, feel like there's an atomic bomb gone off in my head. 
Like when, when I see these kind of, when I see episodes of Raw and Smackdown like this. Yeah. And I'm like, I would rather an atomic bomb go off in my head. <laughs> yeah. It just seems, just seems so ridiculous. There's a bit. But I'm, I like Breezango. Give him a chance. The Baron Corbin. Oh, I like Breezango. <laughs> fashion police and wearing kilts. There's yeah, only kilts some, are weird. There's only two people that needed the fashion police. It was them. <laughs> it was them, yeah. Um, Aiden English's beard is outrageous, by the way. It's a bit. Yeah, it's crazy. Like at one point, he just had a mustache. Yeah, he looks like, a, he looks like one of the Highlanders from. Uh, <laughs> maybe that's what he's going for. Oh, maybe, yeah. Scotland. Maybe unintentional time there. From yeah. Me. Um. Okay. So uh, there was some Baron Corbin nonsense. Uh. Yeah. He, he beat up Kalisto for the match, and then like fell off the apron, hurt his knee, and then Kalisto beat him up. Kayfabe. Kayfabe. Yep, and that, that was that's pretty much that's, yeah, for all they would say about it. Yeah, that was that was that. So uh, because of this, Baron Corbin's too injured to be part of uh, Team SmackDown. Yeah, they really made a decision, decision really quickly, didn't they? Really quickly. No, well, he needs buggered. <laughs> <laughs> it's like a silly, oh, Kalisto's drop kicked him into the stairs. Uh, you You're can't out. be, you know. can't can't compete in Survivor Series. <laughs> it's like the quickest medical analysis of all time. Yeah, Jesus Christ. It's like they googled it. Yeah, can Baron Corbin is like <laughs> what happens when Kalisto drops <laughs> yeah. into? Into the stairs. Well, Google Doctor says... <laughs> <laughs> you can't miss the Survivor Series. Oh, okay. I guess we'll just go with that. Yeah, NHS Online says that it means you can't walk or compete or do anything and you definitely can't be at Survivor Series. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> oh, dear. Um, so there was a, that was a recurring thing going on through the night, anyway. Mm-hmm. Um, this was advertised as the main event. Uh, Becky Lynch versus Alexa Bliss for the Women's Championship. Yeah. It was halfway through the... The card? Yeah, I feel, I feel like this should have gone last. I mean, it's a championship match. If it was, a, if it was also like a WWE championship match, then it would have gone last. Yeah. And if you want to make the women's title be as significant as that, then you just need to put that on last, really. Don't yeah, you? when I saw that what it was announced doing? as the main event, I was like, cool. Yeah, like, oh, that's, that's going to be great. And then the SmackDown carried on afterwards. And it's like, oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> um, fine match. Um, Becky Lynch wins yeah, with a disarmer. Becky Lynch, um, Alexa Bliss's foot was on the rope. Shenanigans. And... Um, yeah, good match. Put it yeah, it's fine. And this isn't the end of it. No, no, no way. It'll, it'll so on. Alexa Bliss will get another shot. For sure. Yeah, you'll hear about this next week. Yep, yep. Kalisto is going to challenge for the Cruiserweight title. Now, this is what we were alluding to earlier on. Yes. Cruiser- uh, Kalisto is going to fight Brian Kendrick at Survivor Series. Yep. And if Kalisto wins, mm-hmm. um, the Cruiserweight title and all of the Cruiserweights go to SmackDown. Good deal. Now, <laughs> with... Uh, a TV show starting fairly soon, just mm-hmm. after Survivor Series, uh, like the week after, called 205 Live, which is a Cruiserweight only show, Good. which is going to be filmed and aired on the WWE Network live after SmackDown every week. Yep. That <laughs> says to me that the Cruiserweights are going to SmackDown. So, yeah, kind of kind of making it obvious there, aren't you, WWE? Uh, Very. Yeah. And, and this is why thing. I think Dolph Ziggler goes to Raw, so that they do a bit of a trade. Yeah. Yeah, I'm, I'm fine with that. Yeah, yeah, I'm fine. Makes with sense. It. Completely fine with it. Um, I think it makes less more... reasons to watch Raw. Yeah, <laughs> exactly. Yeah, I think it makes sense. Everyone's SmackDown. I think the crowd will be into it more. Um, and of course, Kalisto. And Kalisto, yeah, Kalisto yeah. Although, needs something to do. <laughs> if he isn't involved in the Cruiserweight division, What's what he is do? he going to do? Yeah, can't feud about him all forever, can he? Well, that's, yeah, exactly. <laughs> you can't. Yeah, like, we've already had this feud a million times on pre-shows past. Exactly. And now we're going to have it again. <laughs> in fact, probably not. Well, but yeah. Uh, <coughs> Excuse me. Excuse the coughs on this podcast this week. Um, yeah, my throat it's is dying well. on his ass. <laughs> yeah, oh dear. Um, nice. So yeah, I, I'm happy for the cruiserweights to go to SmackDown. I really am. Yeah, same. I think it's the it's the absolute correct decision, and it's a decision that should have been made at the beginning. Yeah. Because not only will Mauro Ronaldo give better commentary, <laughs> yeah, than the bar. three buffoons on Raw. But <laughs> yeah. It's harsh on Graves. Two buffoons and Graves on Raw. Oh, yeah, Graves is great. Graves is great. Um. But it's, it's just going to be... It just suits them better. Yeah, I agree. And especially with the IC title not being there. Yep. So, um, it's, it's, it's going to be... It's a good reshuffle. And at least they're doing something about the things that don't work. Yeah, that's true. So that's good. Very good. So they've realised the Cruiserweights are dying on Raw. <laughs> uh, because they're being sent out at completely wrong times in front of crowds that the energy has been completely sucked out of. Yeah. So move the IC title to Raw... Fine. Uh, it's lost a lot of credibility anyway. Yeah, yeah, kind of. Especially with Dolph Ziggler having it now. <laughs> oh! Oh, you burnt off. <laughs> <laughs> See yourself burnt, son. <laughs> oh, snap. Oh, snap. 
Po daudz, vai daudz. Nē. No, jā, nevar nevar tas. Nē, nevar tas. Um, so we might see a little bit of a reshuffle. The cruise weights are going to go to uh, SmackDown by the looks of it, which yep. is fine with me. Yeah, we do. Because at least if Kalisto wins it, Brian Kendrick will get that shot of winning it back. Oh, yeah. I think I'll have to give it <laughs> Yeah. So great. And he gets back, and gets back with his buddy, Danny Bryan. Oh, cool. Because if Kalisto did win it and the Cruiserweights weren't going to SmackDown, <laughs> who the hell is he going to defend it against? <laughs> yeah, exactly. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> um, okay. Kurt Hawkins defeated Apollo Crews by a roll-up. Yeah. Great. The crowd did not care about this match. Uh, I feel sorry for Crews. Uh, no idea what this booking of Hawkins is. He didn't even get an entrance. He had a black eye. Yeah, bizarre. <laughs> Very bizarre. So weird. Um, the Wyatt fam- the new Wyatt family, Bray Wyatt, Luke Harper and Randy Orton uh, beat Dean Ambrose, Kane and James Ellsworth. Great. Yep. I was James Ellsworth is still around. Yeah, apparently so. He's going to be a Survivor Series too. Yep, going to be the mascot of the team. Uh, um, and yeah, so Ellsworth tagged himself in, ran into like, uh, Bray Wyatt, <coughs> ate a sister Abigail and lost. <clears throat> lost. There you go. There's a word. <laughs> and uh, yeah, that was a match that happened. Oh, God. <laughs> It was no right match until the end. Was, yeah. And and SmackDown was the better show this week. It was, yeah. And uh, to end the show, Shane McMahon is replacing the instantly injured Baron Corbin <laughs> yeah. on Team SmackDown as Survivor Series. Thoughts on that? Weird. Uh, I thought about Baron. Like, is not he wrestler. actually injured? I mean, I know he's not injured from Probably falling not. off the apron and having Kalisto do the frog splash on his leg. Yeah. But is he injured in another set, in, in like an actual... Not uh, kayfabe way. I guess he must be. I can't see another reason why they might him out with Survivor Series. Because Shane McMahon's not a wrestler. He just didn't. I know he threw himself off the cage and that was cool, but he's not a wrestler. And I don't, I don't think he should be in matches anymore right now. Just, it's just, it's just sort of takes attention away from guys who, you know, actually are wrestlers. I do think <laughs> there's more people who are deserving of that spot than Shane. Yeah. I don't have so much have a problem with Shane being in the match, but it... For... If they've taken Baron out for no other reason, just to put than just to put Shane in, yeah, that's then that I don't think is good. Yeah, that's dumb. Because um, it, it just makes Baron Corbin look crap. Yeah, exactly. Um, I hope that's not the reason. Uh, if it is the reason, then shame on you, WWE. Mm. Um, but yeah, it's here's what it is. I'm yes. not really that hyped for Survivor Series. I don't care about the tag matches that much. I'm but. looking forward to Survivor Series. Yeah, but. Um, I can imagine it be right. There's... It's going to make our stream really difficult. Oh, so difficult. <laughs> yeah, I'm not sure how we're going to do that, actually. We'll think because of we're just going to have to six-man tags. Yeah, we'll have to write out some people. Six-man elimination tags, and we're going to have to pick who we have yeah. on the teams. Um, yeah. But yeah, that, that, it's going to be weird. At least we get to use that awesome Brian Kendrick CAW again, though. Oh, yeah, that's, cool. that's true. Cool. Mm. Yeah, but yeah, I'm, I think the five-man match would be cool. Or the five-versus-five match. Uh, like the top guys in SmackDown and the women's match would be alright tag match would be weird it's like, it's like too many people and, yeah it's uh, stupid it's so stupid yeah I don't really care about Rock versus Goldberg so yeah do you not? meh not really it's like <laughs> it's good. the match at WrestleMania was shite and it now it's like yeah. now it's like what 10 years later and they're both aged and it's still going to be shite <laughs> anything Brock's got worse exactly yeah all he does now is suplex people and Goldberg isn't wrestling him forever it's not going to be as good as he was back in the day it's like uh. I think that's fair I think that's, I think what you've just said is yeah I think that's fair yeah I mean I'm looking forward to it from a, a spectacle standpoint yeah but what I could really do without is this fantasy warfare crap <laughs> that they've like invented yeah what is this like, <laughs> if, that... you, if you want this match to be taken serious <laughs> don't show WWE 2K17 in motion while you're yeah. promoting it it looks shit it's dumb and also they're bringing into like the tag match as well oh we get to see AJ Styles versus Roman Reigns wouldn't that be interesting it's, no, we saw that the most of the, this year. Yeah. Like AJ Styles is like, I want to I wanna kick Raw's ass. It's like, you've been on SmackDown for like, what, four months? Yeah. Like, this is, like, if you go back to the start of the year, you were fighting these people anyway. Yeah. It's so dumb. It's like, give it, a, I mean, maybe they should have given it at least a year to like, at least for them to have their own ident- proper ha- identity. Yeah. It's and like then when, have them fight each other. Yeah. It's like we're now... Like Brock Lesnar invaded SmackDown and Manny Orton Raw. Like, oh my God, what are these people doing here? It's ah, oh, so shocking to see them here. It's like, it's like two weeks, it's like two weeks well. ago. Yeah, <laughs> so dumb. Oh, Brock Lesnar from Raw is here. It's like, <laughs> so and <laughs> Randy Orton oh was on SmackDown two weeks ago. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> so uh, it's too soon for too them soon. to really give off the God. 
we hate Raw and uh, uh, we want to beat everyone up from SmackDown. And it's because, <laughs> you know, you've already been fighting each other this year. Yeah. Save it for that. Have a, you know, have both guys on, have both sets of wrestlers on Survivor Series, but just have five guys from SmackDown versus five guys from SmackDown. Yeah. And have five, you know, there's enough on both for everyone to have their spotlight exactly yeah this is, this, it, it feels on a chance too yeah it just feels forced at the minute as you say it needs more time to uh, like need, novelty needs to wear off a bit uh, and Brock Goldberg's cool. been built up because of a video game <laughs> yeah pretty much you in this video game you should this should be a thing in real life hey Goldberg also, here's, some, a, here's a lot of money <laughs> you're a four ninety nine piece of DLC <laughs> yeah uh, we get two versions of you one in pants one in shorts <laughs> great <laughs> bargain your entrance, moveset, everything is exactly the same. Just the pants are different. Just the pants, yeah. Just the pants. <laughs> Bizarre. We, as you can tell, <laughs> we don't have a very high opinion of WWE this week. Yeah. Um, bit of a chike. That's that's polite. Yeah. So next week is the go home for Survivor Series. Um, <clears throat> yeah. So I yeah. Mean, we'll see we'll, what we'll... happens then. I'm expecting nothing. I mean, if Survivor Series was this Sunday, I wouldn't care. Yeah. I'd just be happy to watch it because we know what we're going to get. So <laughs> Yeah, pretty much. Uh, another watch. week of build-up isn't going to help it. I think we said this going into Hell in a Cell too. Pretty much. Uh, like the, Another week of build-up isn't going to help. You might as well just have it now. Yeah, you might as well. The most exciting thing that's going to come out of Survivor Series is the Cruiserweights going to SmackDown. Yeah, pretty much. That's what I'm looking forward to it most, honestly. Yeah, same. It, uh, it really is. Yeah. But that, for me, is is bigger than any of it. Yeah, same. Looking forward to Story 5 Live, seeing some Cruiserweights... You know, uh, having the spotlight, it'd be nice. Yeah. So, yeah. Even more wrestling to watch each week, but at oh, least God. we know you're going to enjoy it. <laughs> yeah. Like NXT, when I watch NXT every week, I'm like, I'm going to enjoy this. It's fine. I'll just skip an hour raw. It's fine. <laughs> we won't miss anything. That's true. Yeah. Let's get the middle bit where it's got Golden Truth versus the Shining Stars and yeah. then Mark Henry versus... Where the hell's Jack Swagger gone? God, he knows. You know, yeah, he could have been that, on the team. That, <laughs> that big acquisition from Raw. Yeah. Well, I've oh, been on the man, team, so... Shane. There's so many stupid things happening in wrestling at the minute. In so WWE, anyway, at least. Um, we're going to have two streams next weekend. Oh, yeah, of course, because NXT. NXT, yeah. which I am excited for. Yeah, NXT is really great. Uh, so next week, and we said this on the show uh, the last time Steve was on, that we would get him on uh, the week of Survivor Series. Oh, yeah. So we'll get friend of the show Steve on the show with us next week. Cool. And we'll give our predictions for uh, both NXT TakeOver Toronto, which I'm really looking forward to. Yep. Um, more than Survivor Series more than Survivor Series <laughs> by far and I feel this is a recurring theme here <laughs> uh, and also we'll give our predictions for Survivor Series yeah of course and yeah we, we'll, when you'll have two streams to look forward to next weekend we'll say yeah. and we'll plug them more next week yeah of course <laughs> um, here comes your favourite segment of the show oh yay um, pick a letter Finn okay um, I will pick the letter uh, R R Oh. <laughs> this week's episode of the Sunny and Finn Show is brought to you by the letter R. So, uh, if you're new to the Sunny and Finn Show, what we do <laughs> is we pick a... Uh, oh, there they are. Look, the Mexicals. Oh, it's yeah. Moving to Super Crazy and that looks like Psychosis. Okay. <laughs> Mexicals. Mexicals. Great name. Uh, R. R for The Rock. <laughs> and Roman Reigns, The Rock Cousin. <laughs> If we didn't know. Okay, let's see what we've got here. Ric Flair. Rhino. Ricky the Dragon Steamboats. <laughs> Ray Mysterio. There's some weird things in this. Ravaging Rick Rude. Rene Dupree. <laughs> I like to find the most obscure thing that we <laughs> can... Uh... And I found it. Oh. Here we go. So, the letter R... <laughs> this week's WWE Encyclopedia, Rad Radford. <laughs> Rad Radford, okay. <laughs> um, weighing in at uh, 264 pounds from Seattle, Washington. His signature move was the Northern Light Suplex. Right, okay. Nice, and uh, let's read there. what it says about Rad Radford. In 1995, Rad Radford left his home in Seattle to become a WWE superstar. Nice. As a fan of grunge bands, the flannel-clad superstar certainly beat to to his own drum inside the ring oh oh sorry inside the ring <laughs> he was just as sound as the most accomplished superstar on the roster I bet yeah I bet <laughs> armed with devastating Northern Lights suplex finisher Radford picked up many wins early in his WWE stay however he wanted to be known for more than just victories 
He also desired, desired an amazing physique. That's when he turned to Skip and Sonny of the Body Donners. Oh, I didn't know you were interviewing Sonny. Yeah. Uh, the fitness gurus agreed to take Radford on as a Body Donner in training but eventually fired the returns, rotund superstar after he failed to make any progress. Radford left WWE soon after. <laughs> All right. Bizarre. I, Sh- sure. What year was that? 1995. Oh, right. Okay. I don't remember him at all. Nope. This week's episode of the Sunny and Finn Show was brought to you by the letter R. Thank you, Rad Radford. <laughs> you enlightened <laughs> my day. Uh, <laughs> Finn's about mind. to go to the dentist. Yeah. What are you having done? I was going to just get an hygienist just get clean. Okay. Yeah. Um, <laughs> Nothing major. <laughs> go subscribe to our podcast on iTunes. Go follow mm-hmm. us on SoundCloud. And you can listen to our podcast anywhere else that podcasts are available. Yep, yep. Please go to youtube.com forward slash Sunny Finn Play. Yay. Um, like, subscribe, share our videos. Uh, you can also follow us on Twitter at Sunny Finn PC. Yeah. Uh, Facebook at uh, facebook.com slash Sunny Finn Podcast. It's back. It's back. With a vengeance. Yes. Uh, we're going to use it more. I'm gonna, I've gained a few likes over the last few days. Nice. For us. We're, we're and also, we're on Instagram, Sunny Finn PC. We post and get loads of likes on there for some reason. Nice. Excellent. <laughs> uh, but for now, uh, this has been the Sunny and Finn Show, episode 38. Yay. I'm Sunny. I'm Finn. And we will speak to you next time, boys and girls. Goodbye. Thanks so much. Goodbye.